On today's show, the ability to partner effectively with individuals and organizations both inside and outside of the community is absolutely essential to building healthy neighborhoods. Today we sit with representatives of an organization who are committed to improving our community through collaboration, innovation, and research. And later, a trip to English Avenue leads me to a promise and a dream. I'm Commissioner Natalie Hall, and the district is next. Your son wants to get a cat, but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Hi, Mom, heading out. Later, Gator. Drive safe. I will. And don't forget to call me when you get there. I know. And don't forget to put your phone away. Already did. And you drive safe too, mister. Welcome to the district. I'm Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall. Community engagement is the heart of change. To improve our communities, to make them places where people are healthy, safe, and cared for takes a lot of work. With the collaborative efforts of our local citizens, entrepreneurs, educators, and community organizers, we can better foster strategies that will holistically improve our communities. There are a number of organizations focused on revitalizing civic engagement while focusing on public policies that engage the issues, one of which we have here with us today. Our guests on the show are representatives of the Center for Civic Innovation, a community-driven research and development lab for local governments, nonprofits, and social entrepreneurs. Their mission is to find, test, and invest in outcome-driven solutions to local social challenges. Over the past few months, they have held over 50 programs and workshops with over 1,500 entrepreneurs and have helped facilitate over $100,000 in early stage investments. Asile Patton, Sadrina Jalal, and Kyle Kessler, welcome to the show. So, Sadrina, what is the C Center for Civic Innovation? Tell us more about that. Yes. <clears throat> so we are a community of creative problem solvers. We provide social entrepreneurs with um, the tools and the trainings that they need, as, as well as access to capital so that they can further their ideas. We also provide um, civic education um, around advocacy. Um, we believe that it's important for the community to understand how the government works and for the government to know how the community is functioning. Well, tell me and the listening public more about each of you and why is this so important to you? Well, for me, um, I'm an Atlanta native, born and raised in Vine City, right around the corner from the Fulton County building. And I've seen Atlanta change and evolve into some things for the better, some things not so much for the better. Yeah. So I'm really interested in making sure that Atlanta is represented in a lot of these conversations mm -hmm. as we're transitioning and inviting more people in. So this is personally very important to me because this is home. 
And you live in a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Vine City is very historic on the other side of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So we're seeing a lot of change happening in that particular area. Yeah, we are. Yes. And Sadrina? Yeah, um, I am originally from Savannah and went to University of Georgia. I consider myself a quintessential Southern girl, but I'm new to the Atlanta area. I lived in Gwinnett for about 20 years, um, and last year my family and I moved to Kirkwood. So, um, so I'm very interested in getting engaged and learning about how some of the changes in our community um, are impacting residents, particularly legacy residents. For me, um, just because I have very strong family ties, I think it's really important that we make sure that we have a, a representation of a cross-section of our community mm -hmm. in these conversations. So it's very, I'm very personally invested in my community and also um, learning more about Atlanta. Yes. And Kyle? So I, I'm not an Atlanta native, but I've been here for over 20 years when I came down to Georgia Tech. Um, and although I've traveled a little bit, I've, I've been here basically ever since. Mm -hmm. For the past 13 years, I've lived downtown, just immediately across from the Fulton County Government Center, uh, but in easy walking distance to City Hall and to the state capitol and all our different government entities. And for many, many years, downtown has not been a place that many people have lived. Uh, but it's definitely a growing population with Georgia State University and other folks that are choosing to come back to the core of the city and to the core of the county as well. Um, so it's interesting to sort of see what's going on, but to understand that there's a dynamic that has to take place between the community and the elected leadership at whatever level that happens to be. Um, and to make sure that we're all working together for the betterment of um, everyone in the community and not just the folks that are choosing to work here, the shoes that come in for a special event. Uh, but for the city to succeed, the community needs to succeed, and for the county to see, the city needs to succeed as well. But how did each of you come to hear about the Center for Civic Innovation? So, um, before CCI, I graduated from Syracuse University with a Civic Engagement Black Studies dual degree. Oh. So, post-grad, as many other college graduates are, trying to find new jobs and new opportunities. So, I typed in Civic Engagement Jobs, Atlanta yeah. and CCI was the first <laughs> thing that popped oh up. Lucky so us, huh? Yes. It showed that what I was trying to align with in terms of my studies really matched with CCI as an organization. And once I learned more about the programming and more about the stuff that we were working on, it showed that I was able to use some of my academics to actually impact my community back at home. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. And how did you find out about it? So I was one of the social entrepreneurs um, that oh. I mentioned. Um, I am also the executive director of the Georgia Farmers Market Association, mm -hmm. and I was part of the 2016 fellowship program that the Center oh. for Civic Innovation um, runs. And uh, yeah, so my introduction to the center was really um, being immersed in the opportunity to learn more about how I could take my idea and the work that we were doing with local farmers and um, amplify it across the city. So you found out through a fellowship program yes. that CCI actually offered that connected into the farmers. Yes. Um, yeah, so my work with the farmers, mm -hmm. um, we realized that there was a need to um, engage um, the community deeper, you know, around the issues um, that farmers face yes. as well as um, food access issues for communities um, in our city and around our state. Um, but we really just didn't know how to, um, to structure um, that message mm -hmm. as well as to develop our organization um, into a business um, that also had social impact. Yes. So um, the Center for Civic Innovation really helped me to frame that conversation and also helped me to develop very specific policy related um, values as well as um, goals um, as it relates to um, impacting our community. Right, and Kyle, I know you, you've just always been <laughs> that community activist because I've known you for years, but just tell our listening audience, how did you connect with Center for Civic Innovation? So um, I was downtown neighborhood association president when the Center for Civic Innovation was first getting started. And it had taken time to get to know uh, business owners and residents in the community and got to know the Center for Civics Innovation's landlord, 
um, and they introduce me, hey, we have this new tenant coming in that's doing some things that are aligned with what you have been doing in the community, so you two need to have a conversation with each other. So then I obviously saw the press and saw what was going on, but got to meet them in neighborhood meetings. It wasn't uh, a business pitch, it wasn't a job application, yeah. but just got to meet them um, through the conversations they were having with business leaders, with entrepreneurs, with community members, with uh, local elected officials. So it was a much more sort of natural process. And uh, whether I should admit this on TV or not, um, I actually didn't have a job with the Center for Civic Innovation for the first year, but was just volunteering because I believed in what they were doing yeah. and wanted to make sure that I found some way to support what they were doing and they could also be supportive of the neighborhood. Nice, okay. And Asil, I see that the Center for Civic Innovation is utilizing the Neighborhood Planning Unit mm -hmm. System, also known as the MPU system, which was established by the late mayor Maynard Holbrook Jackson Jr. in 1974. And so tell me more about CCI's NPU initiative and what the goals are. So, um, as you mentioned, the system was created in 1974 by Mayor Maynard Jackson as a way to bridge the gap between city officials and decisions that were happening and the communities in which they were serving. Um, and what we are trying to do is, one, educate more people about the NPU system. Yes. Um, civics is important and getting involved in those processes is important. And the NPU system is just something that should really be taken advantage of because it's mm -hmm. a community newsletter, it's a way to get to know what's going on in your neighborhood, and it's a way to make decisions and get your voice heard by different government officials. So we're trying to spread the word about that and uplift some of the awesome stories that are happening on the NPU level. Mm -hmm. But we're also trying to look at it just to see how it's functioning currently. Um, it hasn't been reviewed since 1978, so that's over 40 years. What? And as we mentioned, it's such a resource that's so mm -hmm. awesome and so important to so many different residents. Mm -hmm. So. We want to see how neighborhood residents that are already doing the work can be better supported, better resourced, and what they need in order to make the decisions that they want to make on the NPU level. Yes, well, the NPU system is very important to me as a commissioner because my district is unique in that it's entirely inside of the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So I attend mm -hmm. all of those NPU meetings, and as you could imagine, I have a lot. So yep. it takes me about a year just to get to all those neighborhood planning unit meetings. So yeah. this is important to me. Yeah. And Kyle, why has CCI decided to take on the initiative? Well, as Secretary Jordan mentioned before, it's sort of core to our mission about what we do and making sure we're engaging with the community and making sure they're engaged with their elected officials. Mm -hmm. And as Asile mentioned, it hasn't been reviewed in 40 years, and we have seen plenty of documentation that it just needs to be updated. And we had been waiting for folks from the city or other elected officials or community leaders to sort of step up and help get this thing started. But we're not going to wait around. We're a young organization. We're fairly young, even ourselves. We want to make sure that uh, before it gets to the 50th anniversary that someone's taking a look at that. So both through our personal involvement, as I mentioned before, I was neighborhood association president. And in the MPU system, they consist of neighborhood associations or civic organizations. Mm -hmm. So we had that personal knowledge of what was going on. Um, and we were hearing from people that they wanted somebody to take a look at it. You know, it hadn't been reviewed in 40 years. Are we doing the right things? Is it effective? Are we getting the voice that we want to have at City Hall? Mm -hmm. um, so when we started back in 2017, we were working on a civics education program called Civics 101 to make sure that folks knew before they went to the ballot to vote for their mayor, for their city council member, for school board, that they had the basic understandings of what each of those positions did and how it functioned. So we were hoping even at that point to bring it down to the neighborhood level and explain to people what the neighborhood planning units were and how they can vote for the chairperson, all of that information. But as you mentioned, there's a whole lot of NPUs and there's a whole lot of difference between them and we knew we wouldn't have capacity and we'd be losing people because they'd show up at the ballot box and wait a minute, my NPU official isn't on the ballot box, right? Oh, yes. So now, a few years later, we have the time, we have the resources, and there's some change in uh, perspective at City Hall. So we find it's an opportunity now to be able to share with people more information about the MPUs, but also do some surveys, some research to figure out how we want them to be going forward. All right. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, more with the Center for Civic Innovation. Stay with us. You 
made your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Welcome back. We've been talking with the Center for Civic Innovations, Asil Patton, Sadrina Jalal, and Kyle Kessler about their NPU initiative. CCI has also launched a six-month program called Civic Innovation Fellowship. Sadrina, tell us more about this program. Sure. Um, we have, since inception, um, we have s supported 82 social entrepreneurs. Um, we help them to develop their idea and test their idea. And it's a kind of a unique program because very rarely does an entrepreneur um, have an opportunity to, um, to really engage the community about you know, the, the way that they see themselves um, impacting yes. the community and change. Um, and so by test, giving them the opportunity to test the, the idea and, pro and providing them with feedback both from um, our advisors and the trainers that participate in the program as well as their peers, mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to kind of further develop their, their concepts. So um, we just graduated our last class. We had um, wow. 18 entrepreneurs that participated in that. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity um, for them to build their business skills and also to develop networks within um, the CCI community and within their greater Atlanta community as well. That is wonderful. And who are some of your fellows and what kind of work do they do? Oh, wow. Um, so um, I know we ha were talking right before the show started about Samantha and Urban Perform. Yes. Um, she provides um, access to um, affordable um, exercise opportunities in Vine City and in the greater um, west part, west side of Atlanta. Um, so she um, is one of our entrepreneurs that um, we work very closely with. Um, and also Charnette Trimble, um, she has Grandmama's House and she helps to address um, the, the challenge that a lot of seniors face um, in terms of um, aging in place yes. and aging in dignity in their homes and in their communities. Um, and then we also have Terry Bradley, um, uh, Brown Toy Box, and she really is focused on making sure that we increase um, the um, availability for black and brown children to see themselves in STEM-related um, careers. Mm -hmm. And so she has an activity-based um, STEM, uh, STEM themed box that um, that children can interact with and see um, leaders and other um, professionals that look like them represented. Well, you named some organizations or businesses that really sound like they're providing service to the community, like Grandmama's House. Yes. Um, are these nonprofits or for-profit organizations or a mixture of? A mixture of both. Mm -hmm. um, actually, 70% of the social entrepreneurs that we work with are for-profit entities, but they're all centered around um, providing social impact and change in their community. Well, we want to make sure that our nonprofits know that Fulton County has a community service program grant program that provides up to $100,000 in grant funding to those nonprofits that deal with homelessness, youth, seniors, um, disabilities and economic development. So we need to connect on that. Absolutely. And Kyle, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle, tell us more about the events or programs that CCI offers. So in addition to the sort of longer programs um, or curriculum that 
the Center for Civic Innovation puts together. We also have just one day workshops or afternoon classes. We, since we started at the very beginning, we have held leadership breakfasts. So once a month we have a leader in, whether that's a community leader, an elected official, um, a business leader come in and just tell their story. It's not, uh, it's a very casual conversation over breakfast. I know you've participated or been in some of them, but we try just to make sure that people understand sort of what it takes um, and it's not uh, a resume building activity and not to sort of gloat over your successes, but we really talk about the challenges that people face, mm -hmm. but also what that inspiration is so that folks understand that, you know, you can have a leadership style that is much different than somebody else's, but you can still make a real impact in your community. Yes, and I have not been that elected official that has actually spoke. But you have been in the room. But I've actually yes. participated yeah. as a constituent in yeah. that, and it's a really great event. I know you just recently had Antonio Brown, our we newest did. city council member. Yep. So it is really great. And Asile, how is all of this connected? So um, when CCI was created, it was because Atlanta is number one for income inequality in the country. And in addition to that, public participation across the board is low. People don't yeah, vote, true. people don't really know about their political processes. So with the individuals that Sajina was talking about that are trying to affect change in their communities through different initiatives, it's important to support those people and it's important mm -hmm. to elevate them to make sure that they're getting the resources they need. And at the same time, it's important that communities are engaging in the problems that they're having and in the decisions that are being made because these all kind of go towards the same goal of making sure that Atlanta is not as unequal as it is and that people are participating in their decision-making processes. So what we're trying to do is connect some of these dots, both mm -hmm based on the skills that are necessary in order to make Atlanta a better city, but also based on some of the stories of people that are already doing the work, both on the entrepreneurial level and on the NPU side. There are a lot of people that are really trying to make their communities better, mm -hmm. and you might not look at them as entrepreneurial or as change makers initially, but they're people that are trying to make change in their city, so they should be respected and supported just like some of the entrepreneurs that we work with as well. Yes. And I hear you all are celebrating five years in September. This is a major milestone for all of you. So I just want to say congratulations to that Thanks milestone. Thank you. And as an organization, what have you all learned and what are you looking forward to as the Center for Civic Innovation grows? Well, I think one of the things that I've learned as well as um, what I'm looking forward to is that community can um, be found in multiple spaces nice. and very much um, connected to what Asile was saying that, you know, the even the entrepreneurial work or the MPU work, like it kind of bleeds over from, you know, one area um, it within even within CCI. So, you know, we have, we hope that we see folks that are engaged in the MPU initiative, you know, become more engaged engaged in the work that we're doing um, within, you know, some of our programming, our fellowship, and then vice versa. We'd like to see some of our fellows, you know, and we, we do see a lot of our fellows represented in um, community-based work and civic um, leadership as well. So I, I'm really excited to see us build community um, mm -hmm. and um, kind of overlap um, more in the community space, both inside of CCI and then outside in the greater Atlanta area. Yes, that's my goal too. So thank you, Asile, Sadrina, and Kyle for joining us today on this show and for your commitment to engaging and transforming our communities every day. And we'll be right back, so please stay with us. You made this vacation happen. Cleverly merging promotions. Double points with every purchase. And cross-referencing travel sites. <laughs> Aloha. If you can ace your vacation, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. One in four women will experience domestic violence. Domestic violence goes beyond physical abuse. Abusers will emotionally isolate victims cut off their financial resources, and threaten to harm their loved ones. When a victim does decide to leave, she's frequently faced with the challenge of a complex legal system and a confrontation with her abuser in court. That's why the Atlanta Volunteer Lawyers Foundation created the Safe and Stable Families Program 
to help survivors navigate the legal system to permanently break free from their abusers. This family-centered program provides survivors with free legal consultation, safety planning, and referrals to other much-needed assistance, all on the same day they arrive at the courthouse. The program even provides attorneys to stand with survivors in their legal proceedings. AVLF clears the barriers imposed by abusers so that survivors have the resources they need to see the legal process through to the end. Because when survivors have legal assistance, they have a real chance to gain the stability they need to live free of violence. To learn more or to find an opportunity to volunteer, visit avlf.org. When it comes to saving money, ah, what? Scary. Don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. It was a pleasure to connect with my District 4 communities, to hear from them, and to say thank you, and to provide some great information on Fulton County services and programs. I look forward to seeing everyone at the 37th annual celebration next year as I make my way around District 4 to say hello. And finally, I had the opportunity to visit the At Promise Youth and Community Center located in the historic English Avenue neighborhood. The center bridges the divide between the community's youth and the Atlanta Police Foundation, providing specialized services for young people ages 12 to 24, and a gathering place for local residents. It was a pleasure to have Ms. Barbara Harrison, the Director of External Affairs at the King Center, join me on this tour. Through the support of the Fulton County Juvenile Court System, youth who have committed minor offenses or have been suspended or expelled from their school may be referred to the center at the discretion of an APD officer or school administrator. With the King Center's Nonviolence 360 initiative, it can engage youth in understanding to embrace nonviolence as a lifestyle and as a vehicle for social change. Last year at the At Promise Center, 92% of participating high school seniors graduated and 89% of those students who applied for employment secured jobs. In just this year alone, the center has served over 740 young people. With the support of Fulton County and organizations such as the At Promise Center and the King Center, we can continue to steer our youth in a direction that will benefit them, bringing together a promise and a dream. That's our show for today. Special thanks to our guests for joining us and a special thanks to you for watching. Please feel free to contact our District 4 office anytime by calling 404-612-8226 or emailing us at district4 at fultoncountyga.gov. And be sure to connect with us at fullcoD4 on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until we meet again, I'm your District 4 Commissioner, Natalie Hall.
Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs>